Okay, let's get to the big bad hole. <laughs> and we have to start again with the scientific method. Okay, here we start it again so that we remind you what the scientific method is compared to the mathematical method. Here's the mathematical method. And what do they do? Uh, they observe, do experiments. They measure visible objects because they can't measure the invisible. They describe motion with equations, propose the most irrational explanation they can imagine, right? Uh, using concepts as mediators, as physical mediators. And they uh, offer it to their colleagues to challenge and confront their findings, whatever. If more than 50% of them agree with their theory, as it's called in uh, mathematics, which is really a description, not a theory, uh, becomes a theory. Right, the hunch becomes a theory, and when more than 90% of the colleagues agree with a fellow, not because of a, of a fact. So in other words, they vote over there at the math club for theories, and if they have a lot of votes, then it becomes a fact. And then they go on a talk show, uh, talk circuit, and win prizes, and so on. What's the purpose of all this? It's to persuade, convince, convert, and recruit people. We don't do any of that in physics. Okay, so I'm sorry to say to those people who wanted to prove things and bring, it, bring evidence and so on, we don't use evidence in science. Evidence is used to persuade. Experiments are done so that you create evidence so that you can persuade. So we don't do experiments either. In science, we have to explain the cause, uh, the, the result of the experiment, why it happened that way. That's what you got to do in physics. Okay. Okay, so this is what we have for the scientific method, the real scientific method. Here you have it. Uh, three steps, hypothesis, theory, and conclusions. The hypothesis is where what everybody skips, okay, because you got to present the objects and mathematics, uh, mathematicians, and etherists and electric universers and all these other people, all these dissidents and mainstreamers, they never present the objects. They never start by pointing to the object that they're going to use uh, in their theory. And that's where we have to start. And of course, you got to also have uh, strong definitions that you should be able to defend. Okay, If you can't defend your definitions, your definition is worthless. Uh, so you got to go back to the drawing board. You can't start your theory because you're, you're not at the second step yet. You gotta, you're still on the first step. And um, if you have a certain definition, that uh, you can uh, use consistently, rationally, scientifically, then it's valid, and now you can proceed to the next step, which is the statement of the facts, right? The initial scene, essentially. Okay, you got to start at uh, frame number one of your film. Okay, we need to see what's in there, where your what your starting point is, and now you can move on to step number two, which is the theory, explaining your theory. Okay, you got to go through these steps. Without them, you have absolutely nothing. For sure, you have an irrational theory. Okay, because if you skip the steps that you need to do, the mandatory steps, what kind of theory do you have? <laughs> okay, so here's NASA. NASA is a big uh, power player out there in the world of so-called science. Okay, so I mean, if NASA doesn't know it, who does? And uh, this is what they're studying. This is these are the objects that they present. Okay, here it is. Okay, this is out of their website. And uh, these are the objects. They put black holes, dark matter, dark energy, um, Big Bang. The only one I didn't see in there was wormholes, but I'm sure if I look strong enough, uh, you know, uh, a little more time, I'll find the wormholes in there as well. So what are all these objects? What, what are they talking about? What are they? I mean, this is what they're researching or this is what they're spending their money on. Your, I'm sorry, your money. <laughs> They're spending your money on this, okay? And so, real quickly here, you're probably familiar with most of these. Here's the black hole, okay? Looks something like that, okay? Swallows you inwards, okay? We don't know what that is, but uh, uh, the first problem we've got there is that, you know, it's really zero-dimensional. That was proven by Mr. Uh, Subramanian Chandrasekhar uh, in the 30s, and he got his Nobel Prize in 1984 for proving that a black hole is zero dimensional. And uh, Hawking, Stephen Hawking talks about it in his book. Okay, so you can look that up. And uh, here's the wormhole, looks something like this. Essentially unites two universes, as they say. Okay, there's a universe on the bottom in this scenario, and another one on the top. And uh, we can also have them go in the opposite direction. Okay, so here it is going in the opposite direction. Okay, so you got them both ways. 
and we don't know what that is but they call it a wormhole it's a hole through space <laughs> okay so we have a hole through nothing you know um, uh, Bugs Bunny was a little smarter at least he made it through the ground and you can say the ground what's the ground well the ground is all this earth this dust this you know what's underneath your feet and so he made a hole in a physical object which we call the ground the hole is not a physical object the hole is the absence of the physical object in a sense right and these people have a hole through nothing <laughs> a hole inside a hole <laughs> so i don't know how that works in uh, mathematical physics but that's what they have with the um with the wormhole here's the uh uh dark matter okay you got a galaxy and you have all this blob that apparently or allegedly right uh circles it and keeps the uh stars from flying away supposedly okay so this is more or less the notion they have okay we don't know what the blob is they never illustrated it really okay? but they put this blob out there and they say that's dark matter okay what is that stuff and they said it's mass see and that's the issue the issue is they go back to concept they say dark matter is just a concept a mass lots of mass heavy mass and what is that? Yeah, so they illustrate it, well, maybe putting little dots, and they sprinkle some salt, and they say, well, each one of these grains of salt weighs tons, and we'll call that dark matter. What is that? Uh, how come it's not in the center of the Milky Way? How come it's, uh, it doesn't continue all the way to the other galaxy? Why isn't this dark matter between the Earth and the Moon, which would change gravity completely? I mean, if a grain of that weighs tons and tons and tons, boy, I hope they don't bring one of those between the Earth and the Moon. You know, we'd be squashed together suddenly, you know, the Moon against us. That's what happens when you just uh, deal with concepts such as mass and say, oh, the mass did it. You know, you haven't said anything. I need a mechanism. How does these, this uh, dark matter, let's assume it's a bunch of particles because that's what they think of. They're looking for the particle at the accelerators. So they're saying, we're going to produce, we're going to discover the particle known as, the particle, right? Known as dark matter, one of them. Okay, great. So that means they think of particles again, and they think uh, it's uh, just got a lot of mass. Great, no problem. We'll concede all of that. How does the particle pull the star or push on the star and prevent it from flying out of the uh, Milky Way? Why doesn't it push it all the way to the center of the Milky Way? What prevents uh, all this force from pushing it downwards? And of course, they'll never answer that question because they, they just sprinkle that stuff as needed ad hoc. And they say, look, uh, it's all this blob that's preventing the star from flying away. And they need to do it that way because they want to explain it in terms of mass. And it turns out that, you know, even with mass, you cannot explain why a star doesn't fly out of the uh, Milky Way or, or why uh, Pluto doesn't fly out of the solar system. You can't do it with the word mass. What are you going to put some, a little dark matter particle there preventing Pluto from flying out? What's preventing Pluto, Pluto from flying out? What's preventing Jupiter and the Earth from flying out of the solar system? That's what you got to figure out. What are you going to put? Space time? Warp time? Is that what you're going to use? You can't use warp time. You can't use field. You can't use energy. You can't use dark matter or dark energy for that matter, which is pushing everything outwards. So uh, what are you going to put in there? We need a mechanism. We need, a, we need to see the object. Okay, that's the first step. You don't have that. You don't have a theory. All you have is a mathematical description at best. Okay, here's dark energy pushing everything outwards. Everything's flying in opposite directions. Okay. Okay, great. Here's uh, the other thing that they're investigating, which is Big Bang, you know, explosion. And uh, it becomes dark energy, I guess. <laughs> you know, it's pushing everything outwards after a while. Okay, so we have, this is what they're investigating. And uh, using a lot of money to do so, because see, they hand out all this money to a lot of PhDs or postgrads or whatever, and they're doing research on all this stuff. So all this money is going in that direction. Okay, that's, that's the point of today's lecture. It's important to understand what's happening to your money, what, what they're producing with this, and what you're seeing is what they're producing. And it's, it's all holes, it's all dark, it's all black. You know, uh, I guess they're racist because, you know, everything's so nebulous, you know. 
and it's very heavy you know black holes are heavy uh, you know dark matter is heavy all this stuff is very heavy it's invisible it's intangible it's uh, probably translucent I don't know uh, I guess uh, very heavy there's lots of it it's all particles heavy particles why the particle is so heavy you know uh, I mean why would one particle be so heavy well they have to make it heavy in order for their equations to work otherwise their equations don't work that's why the particle is heavy it's it's the other way around and you, know, you first present the particle explain why it's heavy and then you can do your your equations that's not how they do it they do it in reverse okay so here we have um, all these things that they're investigating okay the black hole the wormhole big bang dark matter and dark energy this is what they have okay and we should not forget space-time here uh, it wasn't in their list but uh, you know space-time is being investigated as well okay let me uh, uh, where did I put it here it is okay here's space-time okay that's also being investigated but uh, you know this is kid stuff now for them they, they uh, looked at that in maybe their uh, uh, freshman or sophomore year so they don't deal with space time as much as with the other subject but yeah I remember gravity probe B proved that you know the earth drags time around itself so sometimes they deal with space time as well okay so here we have uh, some of the headlines that NASA put out so you can see what came out of all your money okay this is important here it is this is what they're investigating this is these are the uh, news flashes that they put out there and I just put the titles there the headlines right uh, help solve black hole jet mystery okay unusually close glimpse of black hole snacking on star galaxy with black hole shines an image from NASA's Chandra okay astronomers dig out buried black holes with NASA's Chandra and so on um, telescopes capture stellar delivery service for black hole okay NASA Swift uh, learns a new trick spots a snacking black hole and uh, Hubble finds hungry black hole <laughs> twisting captured uh, star into donut shape. Collapsing star gives birth to black hole. Thank God we should have a birthday party. This, these are the headlines. It's all black hole uh, for black holes, just alone for black holes. Okay, uh, they have the headlines for uh, not wormholes, but or I haven't seen them at least. I haven't investigated that, but um, they have them for all the other stuff. You know, dark matter, dark energy, Big Bang. They're heavy on all that stuff, you know. They're trying to prove all this stuff to the public to justify their funds. And so this is what they're researching. And this, these are the news flashes they put out constantly. It's always, oh, the black hole, the biggest black hole, the farthest black hole, the newest black hole, the greatest, the, the smallest. You know, they got all these categories uh, of black holes and all your money is going in there supporting all this nonsense. And all they do is just talk about these uh, objects, they call them. And here's the NASA budget. Okay, it's not uh, cheap. Okay, uh, 33 billion. Okay, 33 billion. I think I could do something with all that money. That's coming out of your pocket. Okay, and that's uh, what was it for this year? No, 20. Yeah, this year, 23. And you can see that uh, these people just use this money for stuff like that. It's not only for black holes and uh, all this uh, nonsense of no of holes and uh, heavy inexistent stuff and use it for other stuff as well I'm sure they use this money to send rockets to the moon all that stuff that's good and develop technology that's also good no problem there but you know there's a lot of money a lot of this money is going to PhDs who sit down at a desk and they theorize about black holes and trying to break their heads uh, about different aspects of black holes and meanwhile the astronomers look through the telescopes you know now they have the uh, the web telescope out there and you're trying to spot you know certain clues that gives them an idea of what uh, some of this stuff is the black hole what the dark matter is what the dark energy is that's what they're looking for okay here I have uh, another organization it's the National Science Foundation and they have a budget of uh, nine billion almost ten billion dollars okay and they receive another billion uh, in 2023 so what do they support? Well, here's uh, an example, just one example. And this is out of Brazil, okay? And they say, um, involving the United States, Canada, Chile, Brazil, etc. The Gemini Observatory is international 
partnership to provide the tools necessary to sustain cutting-edge research in what? The astronomical sciences. What do they look for? Black holes, dark matter, <laughs> dark energy, the same nonsense I just discovered, I just discussed. Okay, so uh, all these people are in the same boat. And uh, this is maintained, as you can see down at the bottom, says National Science Foundation. So National Science Foundation gives money to the Gemini Observatory, which is a, um, a, a group of people that are in different countries with their own telescopes, their own uh, computers, their own analysis, and then they pull their resources, have meetings, and they talk about what? Dark matter, dark energy, black holes, wormholes, space time, Big Bang. That's where your money is going, okay? And uh, here's another famous country, and this is the uh, United Kingdom. And they're spending, uh, says there, um, what was it? Uh, 0.48, almost 0.5%, half a percentage point of GDP. So I looked up GDP for Great Britain. It's uh, 784 billion. And so if you take, uh, you know, half a percent of that approximately is 4 billion. So they're spending four billion on the Royal Astronomical Society. What do they do? Well, they hand out all this money so that people can research some of these other things, you know, like black holes, dark matter, all the same nonsense that uh, the NASA people and the uh, National Science Foundation are investigating. Uh, they do invest in something else. I thought I'd put the, point this out. Uh, they're also into diversity and inclusion. So they have lots of meetings on this. This is very important to spend your, uh, you know, uh, British money on, you know. So they want to make sure there's diversity and inclusion <laughs> in uh, the Royal Astronomical Society. So they spend more money on that than researching even dark matter. Okay, here's uh, the one in Germany. Okay, this is the Max Planck Institute. Okay, and they're spending approximately 2 billion euros. Okay. So, um, you know, uh, all these groups are spending lots of money in the billions. And here, that $2 billion is pretty much dedicated to black holes, almost all of it, I'd say, or the majority of it, because um, uh, that's about all they do. They do dark matter, black holes, wormholes, all this kind of stuff. Okay, so um, uh, just to rub it in, I just want to show you that if you do a Google search, you can do this on your own, and you look at the ArcSiv or the ArcS4, okay, and this is what you'll find uh, for black holes. Uh, there's six million hits or six million articles, okay, and there you can see some of them. Regular black hole, a short topic review, uh, one in a swirling universe, quantum wave dark matter, okay, rotating black hole, uh, first law of black hole, and so on. Okay, so what do they do? A primordial black hole. They found the first one, the last one, the farthest one, the nearest one. They found them all. Okay, or they're working on that. And that's what they write about. All these people receive funds from organizations like the National Science Foundation, NASA. You know, all that money trickles down. It's coming out of your pocket and going to all these people doing this important research. Okay, I looked up wormholes. It wasn't as bad. Okay, it's only, uh, what is it, uh, about, doesn't even get to 200,000, it's 100 and, what, 120,000 there. Okay, and so uh, there you can see what they're looking at, traversable wormholes. Uh, that's very popular with all these guys. Wormholes and time machines. Okay, so this is what they, this is what they investigate. Okay, and whether they have charge or not. You know, this is where your money's going. Wormholes. It's all, your money's falling down the wormhole to another universe, okay, because you'll never see it again. Okay, and uh, this is what they're investigating as far as dark matter, and um, uh, no, this is black holes, okay, uh, same one I just saw, uh, but I had one for dark matter, I guess I missed it. Okay, and here's dark energy, I hope this one's dark energy, okay, I thought I'd point these out. Okay, yeah, dark energy, the rise of dark energy, and multi-field dark energy, field theory of dark energy, and so on. Energy radiation, early dark energy, and the late dark energy. You got the early and the late. They got them all. So they're, they're looking at dark energy. What is dark energy? Dark energy, what's pushing all the galaxies apart, you know, so that uh, we can explain why the universe, the universe is expanding. Okay? They call it the universe is a thing, they say. Okay, so we don't know if it's space that's expanding or or the planets and stars or both, you know. 
Okay, and here's the Big Bang also. Uh, what is the, it's in the 700,000. Not as bad as black holes, but you can see there's a lot of that. Okay, and uh, again, they're all studying these things, and you can see how many papers or uh, they have written. Not, not in this year, I mean, but you can see there's a lot of material out there. Uh, talking about 6 million uh, papers or uh, websites or blogs talking about black holes, dark matter, all this stuff. Talking about millions. And, um, and yeah, so it's a, these are popular subjects. That's what these people are investigating. That's how they justify their money. They go to Congress and they say, look, we need more money this year. Why? Uh, what's going to happen? Well, we're researching black holes. Oh, okay, and everybody heard about black holes. Oh, yeah, that's an important topic, so they give them money. They give them another million, two billion, or whatever. No problem. And, uh, and what you're listening is to you know, all this being uh, fed back to you. You know, you put the money in and you hear dark matter, you hear black holes. You say, I'm sick and tired of hearing the first black hole, the rotating black hole, the farthest black hole, the, the biggest, the smallest. You know, uh, is this science? We found the first one, we found the last one, we found the biggest, the smallest that we discovered. Is this just so that guy can get a Nobel Prize or, you know, get his paper published? What is all this about? Who cares about the biggest and the smallest? They don't know what gravity is. They, they can't explain a, a magnet, you know, they cannot explain the simple thing, how a magnet attracts another. And they're working on black holes. And people say, well, how does a magnet attract another? Why does the spoon fall to the floor? And they say, oh, we, we cannot explain that. Uh, we'll never explain. We don't care. That's philosophy. We're, we're doing important stuff. We're, we're working on black holes and dark matter. And so, yeah, here's my conclusions, okay? Uh, billions of dollars, tax dollars, right? Uh, dedicated to so-called scientific research, okay? Uh, what is science? According to them, math is. That's what it is, mathematics. And what do they do? Uh, equations plus irrational explanations. That's what they do. And so they work on equations, uh, descriptions. They call them theories. Okay. All post PhDs are working on or researching, you know, black holes, wormholes, dark matter, dark energy, big bang, space time, strings. They're working on all this. Stuff. What is strings? Black hole. Strings, remember, is a holographic type of stuff. That's what they're working on. You know, the 2D is mirrored on the 3D. Uh, when there is no 3D, but they look at the event horizon of 3D uh, ball, even though there's nothing on the inside of it because all matter has been crushed out of existence. There's not even a singularity. A singularity is just the center of this concept. <laughs> So, you know, that's what uh, string theory uh, investigates. And so all these groups are investigating with lots of money, not only government money, but they're also private funds. There are lots of private funds going to all these universities, all these think tanks out there. And, uh, yeah, you can say, well, private money, they can do whatever they want. But, see, the issue is that all this money is going for what? To, pre to present uh, nonsense, stuff that doesn't exist. They're, they're uh, researching inexistent things out there and that's our world today and what are the answers you get if uh, you ask them you know uh, well what have you discovered uh, what is gravity and what is you know, we will never understand how our universe works you get these are the type of answers you get father universe does not have to speak our language or we speak a different language we'll never understand him uh, science is about uh, uh, searching for truth but never finding we just get more accurate what does accuracy have to do with anything and they say, we, we get closer to the truth, so to speak, you know, because we're getting ever more accurate. Uh, Newton's equation was pretty accurate, but Einstein's is a little more accurate, so we're getting closer to the truth. This has nothing to do with accuracy. It's got to do, please explain the mechanism. We still don't understand the mechanism, you know, of gravity, and they say, we'll never find out. Father Universe speaks a different language than we do, and so we can only get more accurate in what? In equations, in measurements. And uh, physical interpretations are, anyway, it's part of philosophy. They have nothing to do with so-called physics. You know, so when you ask for a physical interpretation, they give you an irrational answer. An irrational interpretation. Why? Because they're going to mediate it with concepts. You know, field, uh, energy, ether, you know. And when you uh, call their bluff and say, hey, hold it, what are you, what are you trying to sell me? You know, you're saying that a concept does all this? Well, we don't understand it either. Father Universe speaks a different language. And anyways, that is all philosophy.
and you're dismissed. <laughs> I'll see you next Sunday.